the future of Parler. John Mates was fired as Parler CEO by the company's board of directors last week. Mates said in a memo to staffers he did not participate in this decision and was met with, quote, constant resistance on his original vision for the platform. Joining me right now is the man himself, former CEO of Parler, the founder, the man who built the company, John Mates. John, it's great to have you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. First off, what happened? Why do you think the board made this decision? to take the guy who built the business out of the top spot. Thank you for having me on. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they made their decision. Um, you know, so uh, Jared, the other co-founder and I, we, you know, we designed and architected the original software. Um, I had made most of the iPhone app uh, myself, coded it myself for the first two and a half years. And so, uh, you know, given recent stress and everything going on, there'd been some pushback back and forth, but I don't, I don't understand still to this day uh, why I'd been terminated. But, but you said and you told employees you were met with constant resistance. John, what were they resisting to? You had a vision to try to have a, a free speech uh, opportunity in a world where we're seeing censorship on so many, so many platforms uh, of your competitors. So what, were, what was your board resisting to most? Well, I mean, there's been a lot of things that we've gone back and forth about. But as of recent, you know, having been taken off the Apple Store and taken off the Google Play and uh, Amazon dropping us, you know, I thought it was probably a, a good time to start looking at being a little bit more pragmatic while still respecting free speech. And so my concept was the idea of adding AI and other technologies to the platform uh, to be more proactive, especially in times of scaling, but then to have a system in place so that every decision that was made by these authoritative style devices like these AIs and other people so that you could have a third party come in and say, hey, I don't agree with the decision that these guys made. You can then go ahead and contest it and it'll get sent to a jury of your peers. And that was my idea and my concept that, um, you know, this would then go and you'd get a trial by jury and it would be a fair and, and it would be a good way to double check any rulings. And so that was my vision forward for the moderation front. Um, but I, I don't know really where the biggest uh, discontent, you know, disconnect was. I, I was not this was not explained to me. Yeah. So so assess the whole platform and the competitive landscape for us right now, John. What is your take on what's going on in terms of social media as so many people complain that there is serious censorship going on, we've witnessed it ourselves, obviously, seeing uh, Twitter refusing to have the New York Post uh, report on the stories of Hunter Biden, for example, during an election year. Yeah, the space is a bit interesting. It seems Telegram has picked up quite a bit since Parler's been offline, and that seems to be the direction a lot of people have headed, although they've been coming under fire by Apple now uh, in other, other places as well. I think there's a lawsuit against Google trying to get them uh, taken down. And so, you know, it's really interesting ha seeing how people have kind of shifted since Parler's been offline because that was the go-to place. So, um, you know, it has created a weird vacuum. Uh, so it's, we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is a really good point. Now, Parler investor, Fox News contributor Dan Bongino is pushing back on your statement. Listen to Bongino, uh, who, of course, uh, is uh, one of the backers of Parler. Watch this. The relationship with Parler and the CEO did not work out because the CEO's vision was not ours. Are we, everybody clear on that? Our vision was crystal clear. We needed to get up and fight back. Some terrible decisions were made in the past that led to this, that led us to getting put down by Amazon and others. Your reaction, John, to what you hear from John, Don Bongino? Well, uh, well, a few things. Um, Dan's explanation is the first one I had heard from the company. He's the closest to the company, and Dan's not really, Dan's not a manager. Um, he's never been to the company office, and he's spoken to maybe two employees total, um, and he's pretty new into the company. I mean, I was there for two and a half years before he joined. So I don't know if that explanation is accurate. Um, you know, I think my vision is pretty aligned with what they were saying. I don't think anything I said earlier was too disaligned. Uh, 
But, you know, it is time to be really, you know, mostly pragmatic about going forward. I don't think you could blame decisions such as Amazon, you know, setting an unprecedented, you know, statement by banning Parler. Uh, I don't think you can blame that on me. I think that, you know, especially given that we had numerous backups that all dropped us as well. So I don't think they know what they're talking about. And I think they're winging this. And I think that there's something else at play. And I'm not sure what it is. Uh, and it doesn't make sense why you'd wait five days to tell the employees. I finally at one point told them, hey, guys, you know, uh, to the new executive manager that, that Rebecca put in place, I said, hey, you know, I got to make a statement to the employees into the world tomorrow. It's been five days. People are asking me where am I at. You've been giving people mixed messages. You've been telling people on some channels this, and you've been telling others that. I've had actually third parties call me who are not a part of the company asking me what's going on. So at this point, I have to make a statement tomorrow. And so please, let's do a joint statement. You know, and that's what was conveyed to Mark Meckler, who is the one of the executive managers that Re Rebecca had replaced me with. And so. You know, it's just the fact that they didn't see that coming is really surprising, considering we had five days, tried to work back and forth, and I gave them every opportunity to work with me on making a joint statement. I just don't think they know what's going on. That's all. Where, where do you think this company goes from here, John? I mean, do you have any insight in terms of where you think they'll take the platform? Do you think Parler will come back? You mentioned Telegram is getting lots of market share now. Does Parler have a place to come back? Well, I think their next move is to have to come back, um, and they'll probably have to adopt a lot of the AI and automation procedures that I'd proposed. They'll probably have to adopt a lot of the policies that I set into place, and they'll probably still be using the features that I designed and, and sent out to the team, and I hope that they do. Um, the one thing that worries me is that they won't have, you know, kind of me making sure and testing and working with the engineers to make sure that, that the new you know, terms of service enforcement stuff they're doing. They won't have me there to kind of make sure it's coming out perfect. And it might end up either being over aggressive or not aggressive enough. Uh, and uh, I, but otherwise, you know, they're going to have to move forward and they're going to have to get online as soon as possible because every day they're not online, um, they're losing more and more market share. And so that's really important they get up as quickly as possible. So is there another opportunity for you in this space? John, you're an entrepreneur. What will you do next? Well, I think I've got a lot of opportunities coming up. I mean, you know, uh, people have seen what, what I built, uh, not just me, but the team, you know, right? They've seen everything that we've accomplished and such in such a space that no one thought was contestable. No one thought Facebook was contestable or, or, or Twitter was contestable. And I think we made a substantial uh, splash in the Twitter space. And, uh, and so I think I've got plenty of opportunities. It's just for now, I'm taking a little bit of time off as much as I can handle because weirdly, I haven't taken this much time off in anything uh, in three years. So uh, getting used to that's been interesting. But otherwise, you know, I want to come back and, and work on something with people that share my values and, 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 you know, won't put me in a position that I'm in right now. All right. Well, we want to hear about your journey and, of course, want to hear about the social media space as well. And we will catch up with you along the way. John, please come back soon. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. Same. Thank you. John Mates joining us there.